Welcome back. It's time for FOMO, and today we got a real barn burner, Jenny. I think that's the term. Uh, Kroger. Kroger is really uh, catching the eye today, down 1.85%, so a little bit of an inverse move to what we got the latter half of, uh, of last week, which was a stock that was really a big outperformer. It was a post-earnings move. There was a little bit of analyst pile on. So talk to me. What's the latest here in Kroger? Wait, what is a barn burner? I think that's a, like it's a, it's a big deal. Like a, Oh. A great, a great uh, you know, a sellout show type of a thing. Okay, a barn burner. Yeah, I think Kroger has been almost a barn burner than all year. This is a fun term I'm going to start using. Kroger has been a consistent outperformer, of course, falling into this grocery space. So then it does have this sort of staple like essence in all of our lives, despite the fact that grocery prices and food prices. I said it tongue in cheek. You know, I don't think Kroger is really uh, the name that everyone wakes up excited to talk about. But that doesn't mean that it's not an important conversation and one that's timely. So uh, in the end, I think uh, it always comes full circle. And there's a reason Kroger's been a, been a strong performer this year. Okay, and Kroger is a barn burner for me because I think the grocery store conversation has never been more important. And maybe I'm speaking... Uh, it is, is sort of beautiful in a way. But let's talk about trading it because it's a little bit uh, less of a barn burner when it comes to trading. There's almost uh, relatively no premium in these options. But if... Welcome back to Next Gen Investing. I'm Alex Coffey alongside Jenny Horn. Jenny, let's talk some Oracle here. Earnings preview. Company that's still quite important, I would say, but maybe not the, the company that it once was in terms of prestige. Uh, down a little bit from where it was to start the year by about 25% or so, I would say, Jenny, but still about a $200 billion company, so certainly no slouch. But if you don't have cheese on your pizza, I don't even know that it counts as pizza anymore, so I'm going to take anything <laughs> you say uh, with a grain of salt. All that being said, uh, kind of jokes aside, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's interesting, too, because you can really be a fan of a product. You can be really a fan of a, of a service. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, let's say I love Zoom video, uh, for example. That is, uh, if you're looking for something that's maybe a smaller of the two products, uh, Papa John stuck out to me for that reason alone. If your capital's not an issue or you're comfortable uh, trading a bigger product uh, and, you, and you like a Domino's pizza better than a, a Papa John's, uh, then there would be no reason to go there. But simply the reason I'm going to look at Papa John's here for a trade, Jenny, is just simply because it was the smaller on a stock price basis of the two. And I think that that uh, opens the strategy book just a little bit more. Uh, from a and carrying option positions into expiration can add risk, like unanticipated exercise or assignment. Now that does it for this fun FOMO segment today, Alex. But coming up next, we will preview bed. Welcome back to Next Gen Investing. Alex Coffey alongside Jenny Horn. It's time to talk a little earnings preview in bed, bath, and beyond. And this has been a... I don't even know, a uh, unique name, obviously, but uh, kind of a tough, uh, tough one to really, we'll kind of leave that aside. Let's just discuss Bed Bath & Beyond from a, just a standpoint of what are you trying to accomplish as a, as a business and in what environment? I mean, they sell a, a lot of home goods, let's say, mm -hmm. uh, brick and mortar, outdoor mall, kind of, uh, you know, department store style uh, merchandising. Um, all of those are kind of things that are going, uh, kind of in the opposite of where trend is going. We're in a world where we, we're doing things more direct to consumer. Well, that is in favor of a company that uh, is sort of the middleman in those kind of purchases. We're doing things more online because oftentimes, especially in the home goods space, things are a little bit bigger. It's a lot to carry around, particularly in urban areas. Er, areas. Uh, and in a time where shipping is seemingly overnight for free on so many things like Amazon's underneath their umbrella as well, uh, there is still obviously consumers going there. But as George Tillis would talk about, you're talking about declining kind of sales environment, uh, margins being pressured, uh, and trends moving away. Uh, it makes it difficult. But again, it's got that meme stock kind of like activity with it. Uh, it has extraordinary volatility, uh, and certainly earnings could be a catalyst one way or another. And their offerings aren't unique to the company. I mean, you're competing with names like Target, Amazon, Walmart.